Hey guys, Creep the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. It is here Christmas morning. <laughs> Uh, and so Merry Christmas and I wanted to do a very quick video hopefully today about um, a very often overlooked uh, aspect of cooled astrophotography cameras which is setting the offset and I've talked about like the gain setting of astrophotography cameras in quite uh, a bit of depth in previous videos I'll put some links down below uh, and above if I don't forget uh, but I have been very like loose about what to use as the camera offset and more than that I've actually myself been using the offset of my top tech cameras wrong uh, and my offset values seem to have been too small I think I could get slightly better images at literally no cost uh, to myself by simply properly setting the offset of my cameras and if I'm wrong then maybe so are you <laughs> So it it might be something worth checking, uh, just like a little uh, Christmas gift, uh, get uh, better images or slightly better images without uh, needing to make any loss while you're doing so. So I am com currently connected to my remote uh, computer on my telescope right now and we are connected to my uh, Topetech camera with the IMX571 APS-C size sensor and the camera is cooled to minus 10 degrees uh, Celsius right now and you can see that the gain is 100 and the offset is 50. Now the offset is really exactly as its name implies it's an offset it basically brightens up the image of the camera that gets off the sensor by just pushing it to the right of the histogram by basically just like adding a fixed value to all of the pixels a fixed offset and so what is the point of adding a fixed values to to all of the pixels it is so that you do not end up with completely dark pixels which can make like noise reduction and noise processing of your images very difficult to deal with and those are pixels that contain no information they just tell us this is a value of zero that there might have been information in that pixel already but we lost it because that pixel is clipped to black and so the offset by basically putting the, the whole image the whole sensor on the pedestal will avoid this so we can actually get more information and get better processing in the end and i've set my offset to the uh to all of my top tech cameras to 50 because i believe that was kind of like the default offset that i got when i connected to the camera i'm like this is fine right and by the way the offset that that pedestal that you put the uh the, the camera sensor on effectively or the brightness of your pixels on uh, the optimal value or like let's say the minimum value will uh, differ uh, depending on your gain so if you ever change the gain of your camera you will need to also double check the offset fortunately it's very easy to do uh, and by the way if you change like high gain mode to uh, low gain mode or ultra mode on or off or high full well mode on and off if you make any of those changes you will need to change the offset or double check that the offset is properly set so how do you know that the offset is properly set well in Nina you can uh, go to the imaging tab and you can see that I have my histogram here uh, very large by default you probably have it as uh, something like this right with the, the statistics in this uh, window you can drag that out and make it much bigger except that here I put it here by mistake there much bigger here it is in a, in a separate window basically and what we're going to do is we're gonna take a bias frames so I'm gonna I'm gonna take like the a short exposure time something like 0.001 seconds and I'm gonna take one exposure at an exposure time and we're gonna see what I get so this is basically my bias frames you can see it's just like bands of noise and on the histogram we can see this histogram is stuck to the left and the histogram in Nina is not quite high resolution enough to see when that little spike here has left the left edge of the um, of the histogram and this is exactly what we're going to attempt to do with the offset what's very interesting is you can see the statistics uh, the minimum value here is zero and there are 13,000 pixels at that minimum value of zero 
Zero means I'm click clipping the darks. And my bias frames for all of those pixels, they won't do anything when I calibrate the sensor with them. You can see that, that my mean and median are around 54, 53. Um, this is because my offset is 50. So it's going to be very close to the offset that you have set when you're taking the bias frame. To note, my telescope is outside um, and there could be some small light leaks through the off-axis guider, through the filter drawer, uh, etc. So uh, if I take those, the same image in darkness at nighttime, or with the, uh, the cap on the camera, I actually get a, a, a value that's closer to 51. So I feel like there's a slight light leak, light leak going on, but it's not going to affect this example. If you're going to do that, you really want to make sure that you have like the, the camera cap on and ideally you, you are in a dark room or the camera is like in a dark box or something just to be sure. So we see we have those pixels with a value of zero. Now to show you exactly what the offset does, I'm going to go back to equipment and set a very, very large offset of let's say 5,000. Okay, and then we're going to retake a frame here in the imaging tab and let's see what happens to the histogram. Bam, the histogram is now has been moved to the right. We've been offsetting the whole image to the right. We've added this offset, this pedestal to the brightness value of all of the pixels. And now we definitely don't get any dark pixels. You can see the minimum value is 48, 49 uh, with uh, just one uh, pixel at that value. Everything else is above than that. And just like I was expecting, the mean and medium are now like 5,004 and 5,003, something like that. So the, we've added that offset to the, uh, the base of the, uh, of the bias frame. So now obviously we don't have any black pixels, so we just could call it a day, my 5000 offset works. No, because what you're doing when you're increasing the, the, the offset is there a very slight tiny sacrifice, which is the dynamic range of your camera. Because now that you're pushing all of the pixels brightness values higher, you're also making clipping the pixels slightly easier. This particular camera, when I look at this histogram, it has roughly 65,000 levels of brightness available to it. And by setting the minimum at around 4,850 here, it means that the maximum, the, the range between 5,000 roughly and 65,000 is just 60,000. So that's my dy dynamic range. That, that is the values, the number of values that I have to play with, 60,000. If I had my offset at zero, the value, the number of values that I can play, play with are 65,000 roughly. So there is a small, tiny sacrifice, but for small values of offset, it really does not matter. So, uh, but here we can see 5,000 is too high. Okay, let's try to set an offset of, let's say, 150. And I'm saying 150 because you can see my offset is 5,000, but the minimum value is uh, 4,850 roughly. So that would be 150 less than 5,000, which tells me like, hey, if I push the whole image by 150, maybe I will avoid minimum pixels at uh, zero. And actually I'm gonna do 151 and let's see what happens. So I'm going to uh, go back here and set the offset to 151. Go back to the imaging uh, tab, take another image. And now we're gonna see, um, again, as expected, like this kind of mean and medium of 155. And now while I still have a minimum pixel at zero, uh, I only have like three of those from down from 13,000 that we have earlier. So you're definitely on the right track. So let me go back and I'm just gonna put the value that um, I put that I felt was like the safest. Basically, I put something a bit higher than the ideal value, which was around like 150, 160, um, just to, to have like a bit of buffer there, especially since the loss in dynamic range or the sacrifice that I'm making is so slight. So now with an offset of 200, I go back to the uh, imaging tab, I take an exposure, and this time the minimum value is 30. And there's only one pixel at, at that value. So this is fine to me. That works. Um, I've, I've sacrificed, basically compared to my offset of 50 earlier, I've sacrificed 150 ADU steps of, um, over 65,000. So that's not a big sacrifice and it should help me 
uh, get better images afterwards to proceed. If you don't have Nina, if you're not using Nina, um, you could be using SharpCap. Just make sure that you use the histogram of SharpCap, for instance, to make sure that you are, the goal will be to detach the, the histogram from the left edge of the, the frame. And we're doing that in Nina, even if the, right now the histogram still looks like it's stuck to the left-hand side of the, of the, the, the the frame, it's uh, actually not. It's just that the histogram resolution that Nina offers is too low for the uh, for the purpose of this exercise. So I'm using the uh, the minimum statistics, which is a perfect indicator because as long as this minimum is over zero, it means my whole histogram has been like taken off the less left edge of my of my histogram. This is exactly what I need. So once you've done that, you've set your offset um, and uh, and what should you do next? Well, you need to retake your calibration frames. You need to take your bias frames again. You need, you need to take your dark frames again. If you use dark frames, I don't anymore. Um, you need to take your flat frames again with that new offset. And of course, you need to take light frames again. And you need to make sure that you uh, use those uh, with light frames that also use that offset. Don't uh, make the mistake of calibrating your new light frames with your old bias frames, for instance, that were taken at different offsets. And before you go to your computer and connect your camera to the computer to do this, and while making sure that you're in a dark room and your camera cap, cap is on, very important step before that is to go down below, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and leave a comment. Oh, that was cheeky of me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's super important because it really helps the channel out. It helps my videos have more reach and the YouTube uh, algorithm is a very fickle uh, mistress. Uh, is that okay to say? I guess so, whatever. Um, anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. I also want to give a special shout out to all of my Patreon subs uh, subscribers and my channel members. Uh, who truly uh, support me financially as well. It makes a huge difference and it really lets me keep making those videos. So thank you so much. Uh, and of course, thank you so much for watching across this whole year. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. There have been so many useful comments uh, on my videos. It's amazing the, the amount of information that we have in this community. And I see so many people are replying to other comments, helping each other out. And this is this is such a, a positive feedback loop. And I love this. So I always invite people to look down in the comment, even if you're not going to add a comment, which doesn't help the video, uh, but to read through the comments because I make mistakes and people point them out down in the comments. Uh, there's so many good things that uh, that can be done. Uh, and if you're doing some late uh, Christmas shopping, by the way, you may want to use my Amazon affiliate link down below or any of the affiliate links down below. It's at no cost to you and it really helps the channel out. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's not the right uh, thing to do right now. Uh, it's Christmas morning. I'm just waiting for my wife to wake up. <laughs> And once that's done, I will open up my Christmas presents. Uh, I don't think there's going to be anything astrophotography related uh, this year, but uh, who knows? We'll see. With that, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, enjoy Christmas. Uh, enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the new year. Uh, maybe I'll make new videos before then. I don't know. I'll see. Um, again, thank you so much. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.